This is five different ways to estimate pi by me. So our first way to estimate pi is by using the formula pi equals circumference over diameter, which was originally how it was defined. So first you find a circular object. This could be like a ball or like a water bottle or like a toilet paper roll or something, or even a pencil if you have a precise enough measurement. But all you need is something that's circular and then you measure the circumference, you measure the diameter, and then you use, you just divide them. You use the C over D, uh, you use the C over D formula shown here. And the accuracy depends on uh, how round the object is. So like if it's like really rough, then you might get an incorrect estimate. And it also depends on how precise your measurements are. So we get a circular object, which in my case is a pi, and then we measure its circumference. We just wrap it around, see what number we get. This is around 71 and a half inches. And then we measure the diameter, which is around 22 centimeters. Dividing these numbers, we can see that our estimate for pi is 3.25, which isn't that good, but it could be better if we used a better measuring tool. Hmm. The second method is called Monte Carlo simulations, or I like to call them dot spreads, because all you're really doing is plotting a bunch of dots in a square and then seeing how many of them land in a circle. And by reasoning with the areas, we can kind of see that the area of the circle divided by the area of the square is around equal to the number of dots in the circle divided by the total number of dots. And we can actually say that these two ratios are equal as the number of dots that we plot goes to infinity. The expected accuracy depends on how many dots you plot, because the more dots you plot, the closer it's going to be to being equal to the actual ratio of the area of the circle over the area of the square. And your actual accuracy depends on luck, since you're plotting a bunch of random points. So you can't actually control where they land. And you're hoping that the average of all of them, since you're plotting so many, will approach the correct number. And a fun fact about this method is that it can actually be used to approximate definite integrals. And I talk about this in my video called Numerical Integration Methods. You should check it out. Here's my implementation of a uh, simulation that simulates this behavior. So in the first one, we're plotting 10 points. And uh, one of them was outside of the circle, one of them was inside. So our estimated pi value is 3.6, which is really bad. It's not even close to being 3.14. So what we do is plot more points. So I'm going to slowly increase the number of points that we're plotting. So you see here our percent error drops drastically. It's 0 0.58 as opposed to 14.59. And then we keep plotting more points, more and more points. We have one, which is very interesting because the previous one, using less points, had a smaller percent error, which is important to note because, as I said, just the number of points that you're plotting doesn't directly correspond to what kind of percent error that you're going to get. It's really up to luck since you're plotting random points. And then we keep going, we plot more points. See this one here, we have a lower percent error, and then we keep decreasing the percent error, and then we keep decreasing, 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 plotting more points, and then we finally uh, plot so many points that my computer actually takes a while, see 12 seconds here, to actually compute it all and we can get a pretty good estimate of pi. The third method is rational approximations. So a really long time ago, when people were trying to estimate pi and nobody really had a good estimate, people were using fractions to estimate pi. So for example, here we have 22 over 7, which is a pretty famous one, and we have 355 over 113, which is also pretty famous, which is more accurate than 22 over 7 since it's using bigger numbers. These approximations were generalized by these quote-unquote generalized continued fractions, which are fractions uh, that are continued infinitely that actually approach pi as the number of uh, terms that you use goes to infinity. 
So using this method, your accuracy is going to depend on how many terms you use and which one you pick, because some of them converge faster than others. And then the fourth method is infinite series. So my favorite infinite series to uh, approximate pi is this one right here. Pi over 4 equals 1 minus 1 third plus 1 fifth minus 1 seventh. So it's basically the alternating sum of the reciprocals of the odd integers. And it uses arctan as a proof, which we learned in calculus this year. But the thing about it is that it's very, very slow to converge. So you have to calculate a whole lot of these terms to get close to actually getting to pi. So some other ones are this one, which I'm not going to read because it's a monstrosity, but it's really uh, renowned for its fast convergence. So if you calculate a couple of terms of this big guy, you'll get pretty close to pi already. And there's uh, other series like this one here. And your accuracy depends on how many terms you calculate and which series you use. You can also sometimes put a bound on your error given that you know how many terms you calculated. And then the last one is Mackin-like formulas, which uses the a tan of x Maclaurin series, which is uh, not written here, but the Maclaurin series is like x minus x to the third over three plus x to the fifth over five. Um, and it specifically tries to make the arguments of the function smaller so that it converges faster. Because earlier we had this one right here, which was based on it, but it was very slow because the argument to the function is very large. It was like 1. But here, if we make the argument 1 8th or 1 57th, or even down here, 1 out of 239, then it's going to converge a lot faster. And these actually were the formulas used to calculate pi to billions and trillions of digits on supercomputers. Engine start, no problem. Five minutes. Tidin, 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 problem engine. Ублюдок, мать твою, ну иди сюда, говно собачье, а ты решил ко мне лезть, ты. What the hell?